Hello and welcome back to our SQL Server installation series here. And we're kind of on the last module now. Once again, optional, really, um, because this is only going to be for really reporting services. Now, there's a small caveat to that. Uh, this one, we're going to actually install the reporting services report server, right? So we installed the reporting service itself as part of the SQL Server installation. Um, well, actually, that actually wasn't part of it. It was the, the Microsoft Database Analysis Services. We did install Visual Studio, which included the reporting services project. So you can like design your actual SSRS reports there. Here, this is basically an on-prem report server in which you can deploy your um, SSRS reports to. Now, it should be noted, I don't want to get too into the weeds with this conversation, but there is something known as the Power BI report server. This is basically an on-premise report server, so you can deploy like Power BI reports if you're not going to be deploying to the cloud service. This is effectively known as a superset of the reporting services report server feature. So there's kind of like two on-prem report servers you can install. SSRS, so that's what we're going to do, which is just for reporting services. And then there's Power BI report server, effectively the same as this one, except it adds a bunch of features to support Power BI reports for a local on-prem deployment. So if you're unfamiliar with that, that's probably not what you're going to be needing to do. Just want to throw it out there. There is another option. We do have um, a class we talk about for on-prem uh, Power BI, and we discussed that in that class. Here, we're going to ins be installing um, Reporting Services 2022 Report Server. So that's what we're going to be doing. So let's go ahead and get out of the PowerPoint. <clears throat> you can, of course, go on Google, search this online. But just as a reminder, in our installer that we've been using across multiple videos here, right, the little setup guy that we have, this also will just launch you exactly where you need to go so that there's no questions, right? You go to Installation install SQL Server reporting services. So we can go ahead, select it. It literally launches a browser and it gives you the download right here. I've already gone ahead and done it. So if you want, go ahead and download that, pause it if you need to. And it actually has a bunch of stuff. It actually says, hey, before you begin, you might want to check out some hardware requirements. And then it walks through these steps. These are the very things that you and I are going to be doing together. The one that has a bit involved is this right here, configuring your report server. Um, that one, it doesn't have a step-by-step. -step. I don't think it even has it here. It may. Yeah, there's no real step-by-step, -step, just some recommendations. Um, but we're going to be going through it once again. There actually are a lot of options in that configuration. Once again, we'll be just doing a basic one for the sake of being able to leverage this for our training classes, which, once again, it's only if you're doing reporting services classes. That's the only reason why you would need this, okay? So if you want, you can leave this open. You can have the instructions there if you'd like. Once again, I've already gone ahead and downloaded that SQL Server reporting services item. So I'm going to go ahead and run this. Give that a moment. I want to install reporting services. What type of license? You could do evaluation, but once again, from an end user license agreement, the developer is a fully featured report server that is free uh, but it's meant for, once again, development use, academic use. Uh, so just keep that in mind. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it to developer. Go ahead and hit next. The user agreement that I was just kind of reminding. It says, hey, in order to do this, you're going to have to basically have, you're going to end up creating two databases, right? You're going to have a report database and a report temp DB. So report DB, report temp DB. Those are the default names that are used for them. So it's saying in order to do this, you need a database engine available. Now, technically, this database engine can exist elsewhere. It's just saying you, you're going to need to get to this eventually when you're configuring it. So um, <clears throat> we're going to go ahead and do this, right? So I'm going to go ahead and hit next. Uh, just go ahead and use the default storage location. This, of course, is going to move through a little bit of a process. Looks like it's moving through pretty quickly. Give that a second. And you can see here, setup completed. Setup has installed the files needed. You're ready to configure because we're not really able to do anything. So technically, there is the reporting services on SSMS, but we need to get this set up here. This is the actual server itself that's going to coincide with those objects. So I'm going to go ahead and just say configure this um, report server. Um, 
right here. So I'm gonna click that. It is something here that you can always launch in your window screen. So it is an option that you can go through. Uh, you can see this popped up. The main screen is actually on my other one. I'll drag it here in a moment, but it's saying, okay, which instance, which server do you wanna to connect to for reporting services? Um, and I'm just going to use, since we have a D or when we installed this, the default naming convention was Quintana one. So I'm going to go ahead and simply hit connect. So you can see now I'm connected to it. You can see that it is the instance ID gives me the version, the report server database name. It's not there because we haven't gone through the process. That's what we're doing here. This is a first time configuration. And once it's done, it's going to be up running and ready to use. Uh, you can of course always come back. This is the name of the application, the Report Server Configuration Manager. It's in Windows. You can always come back to this if you need to make adjustments or changes. We're just gonna go down the line, Service Account. I'm just gonna stay with sticking and using the built-in virtual service account. Um, this is gonna be more with IT. They may want you to have like a service account they've already created that has specific permissions. We won't be going into that in this call, in this video, part of me. The web service URL, this is where we actually do have to move through and, um, kind of make a decision, right? Right here, it's saying, hey, we're gonna be using the report server web virtual directory. So we're gonna call it report server. I'm gonna leave it as the default. It's saying, do you wanna use TCP port 80, all these fun different things. And it tells you what the URL is gonna be. Quintana one, the name of the instance, I uh, port 80, because we have left it as that, and report server, right? The actual kind of root directory here. Uh, and I'm fine with that. I'm gonna leave it as is. You can see it gives you some information um, and I'm just gonna hit apply. Right. That's all you have to do. If you wanted to make adjustments, make those adjustments and then you can hit apply. So it's going through basically creating the directory, preserving these names, just doing a lot of system related items in the background. So it stopped the service and now it's restarted it. So the web service URL is good to go. Let's go to the database, right? We need to have this database. So you can see there's none currently. So what I can do is say change database. In this case, we know we have a fresh instance of SQL Server. We haven't done anything. Well, well, we did restore an AdventureWorks database, but that's its own little thing. This is a fresh instance, so there is no reporting DB. There is no reporting temp DB. Effectively, let's say you already had a report server installed and you basically restored those databases, so it has all these report information already in there. Uh, you could basically like recover it to a degree, right? Hey, I've got a SQL Server. I've got reporting databases with information and reports stored already in there. Let's just use that. So you can see choose an existing is what would allow for it, but we don't. So I'm gonna hit create a new report server database. It's then gonna ask me where we would like to do this. We only, we're gonna focus on the one that we've done. So you can see I'm leaving my default instance, Quintana one, whatever your default instances, do that. Authentication type, current user, integrated security. You can test this if you like. We're already admins on this, so that's fine. Uh, and then you can hit next. <clears throat> Now, if you want to give the name of this database a different name, you can. Once again, it's just going to be called Report Server. And you're going to see it also does this Report Server Temp database. So just, I don't know. I'm going to leave it the, the same normal. So if you want to make adjustments, you can. But I'm going to leave it the same. Uh, credentials, basically this SQL Server Reporting Services. We're going to let it just use these kind of system credentials here, these service account credentials. So I'm going to hit Next. Basically, we haven't done anything. All I need to do is hit Finish. It's going through, it's now creating that database and the underlying tables and the structures for those tables inside of our SQL Server instance so that we can now store reports, anything we publish out there, that's where it's going to be managed and maintained. So you can see tasks complete. So we're good there. The last thing we really, there's only really two more things we have to go through. One is the web portal URL, right? So basically there is a front end URL that we can access and there is a um, back end where we use this for deploying and that fun stuff. So you can see the portal, that's what users will go to to interact with the user interface. Um, and then we have the service, which is the, the back end. So you can see this is the address. If we go here, we can see that it ends up just kind of not doing and it's still our, our server's not there, but it's there, it's up and running. So if we had different directories, those would appear here. But like I said, this is more for the back end. We're gonna provide our users access here on the web portal. So I'm gonna leave it as the virtual directory being reports. This is gonna be the URL. So let's go ahead and create it, reserve it. Should take a quick moment, not at all, nothing fancy since we haven't done anything beyond the defaults. It'll effectively, I think it stops the service once again and then starts it once again. There we go. We can see it stopped it and started it. 
and this has now been completed. Other items, email settings, this is for basically, um, you can specify an SMTP server uh, to send emails from the report server. This is when you set up things like subscriptions and deliveries. If you'd like, you can go through that, it's optional. Uh, the executioner account, this is for unattended executions. So that's explained in our reporting services classes. The encryption keys, uh, it does require you to basically create a backup here. So you can see there's this little note that says, hey, the backup key, if you want to ever recover this, you could do it. But I think we don't need to actually do it. That used to be required. It looks like it's just a warning. So I'll leave it there. File share accounts, optional, scale out, optional. These are topics that are discussed in our actual reporting services classes. But now if we actually go over here into our web portal URL, there it is. This is our SQL Server Reporting Services Report Server. Now this is the default, so we literally have like, you know, no directories. Um, there's a whole aspect here around, of course, access and permissions. Now I'm the admin, so we have full access. But once again, this is covered in our Reporting Services classes, so you can definitely go and check in on that side of things. But this is effectively once you're done creating your SSR supports, where you would deploy them and where we're used, your users would consume them. So we now have this up and running. And this report server configuration manager is always available for you to come back in here and make adjustments to your server as you see fit. So hopefully that worked out well for you. You got that going, no issues, no errors. Um, we've basically moved through an entirety of a SQL Server installation and you know, if you did go through all parts of this, there's basically nothing you won't be able to do in all of our learning across the platform. But once again, there were optional pieces to this. Um, and I hopefully was able to verbalize when it was, you know, yes or no, if you wanted to do it. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, so yeah, I mean, happy hunting. You now have SQL Server ready to go. You've got your BI project templates ready to go. You're ready to get started and get learning. So I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you and whatever next training video you decide to adventure down. Take care.